Hello, welcome to an MTD podcast. Uh, this is the weekend review that we do every Friday, and as I said last week, we're going to be doing this one from Emo. In fact, this is pre-recorded. It's Thursday night. We're at the airport. We're just on our way home. Uh, there's four of us here that are going to um, contribute, hopefully, in this podcast. There's obviously myself, Paul Jones, Managing Director and Founder of MTD CNC. I've got uh, Joe Reynolds with me. I've got Mark Dedman with me, and I've got Colin Griffiths with me. Uh, all four of us have been here all week at Emo. And I tell you what, it's been a f- it really has been great to be back at an event for the first time in just over a year. Uh, the halls were, were pretty busy. There was uh, lots of activity, lots of technology of what we're going to talk about during the... Um, that's my one there, David. David's just... Uh, oh, hold pinching. on. There's a bit of an interruption here because someone's just, just nicked Paul's, glass someone's nick, which, someone's <laughs> yeah. nicking Paul's although, drink. <laughs> although I would say David does deserve it. He's been with us one of the... No, uh, he doesn't because the, he's the under 18, week. just to clarify. Yeah, let me finish the, interu- the introduction, Colin, and you, then I'll, I'll, I'll bring you into the, uh, into the show. Um, so, yeah, we're going to be talking about all the highlights that we've seen this week, all of the, the technologies that were on show, what we've been up to so Socially as well, I'm sure there'll be a little bit of that. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been a great week. Um, yeah, so you enjoyed yourself, Colin? No. <laughs> so that's normal then for you? <laughs> it's been absolutely marvellous. I'll tell you what, what I enjoyed most, Monday, Colin, can you do a quick review of the multi-spindle machine at Tornos? Absolutely be de- delighted if I could say that. I've been in the lounge a little bit longer than these lot because they got stuck because they had a bit of a COVID-based incident. It was at the machine. It was absolutely phenomenal. But then Paul landed on me. Do you want to be in the uh, live event, Colin? Surprised you're still alive. You landed, yeah. You? <laughs> yeah, that's very, very true. He did land it on me, and my answer to him was a no. But it still tucked me up anyway. But it was brilliant. We had the. It was. It was. And if you do watch that traumatic event that we did at Tornos, if you watch the last ten minutes, you'll see how traumatic it was for Colin and the fact that it looked like he'd. Uh, Sweater McSweaterson. Uh, yeah, <laughs> if there is such a person. And actually, on that note, we'll be talking about some of the names we've come across this week as well, um, which will probably entertain you, I'm sure. Uh, Mark, you had a good time? Yeah, it's been fantastic. It's nice to be back um, at Emo, seeing lots of people, lots of technology. Okay, not as many people, not as many halls, but um, yeah, it's really, there really was. Nice. Well, I think there were seven halls in the end, weren't there? I think no, there I think yeah. um, you, you missed Hall 6. It okay, was, so it, there were six was pretty full halls, though, weren't yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. Well, but I mean, what, how would that compare to, to normal? The white cable 14. Uh, yeah, 12, sort of 10, 12s normally, but obviously a lot of companies... Even at, um, even at a Milan emo, yeah. would it be that many? Yeah, right. yeah. So you're probably looking at half the half the capacity of what it would normally be, then? Mm, I don't, is, is, I if I'm honest with you, I can't remember the last Milan, <laughs> as in the size of it. But um, as far as I'm concerned, mm. it was lovely to be out, and... There was a lot more people than I anticipated, mm-hmm. and uh, a lot more uh, companies were were quite excited that um, you know they made the effort basically. Yeah, Joe, you enjoy yourself? Yeah, great to be back on the road, wasn't it? Great to be back overseas. Uh, yeah, and get a bit of culture, look at some technology, some machine tools. Yeah, a good fun had by all. Great, how did you gout? Company. How did you gout hold out? It's been great all week, but I forgot my tablets. You forgot your gout tablets. And today, today it's come back with a vengeance. But do you, do you think that it's what you what you put into your body other than the medication that, that <laughs> contributes? Well, I, to I, heard gout. <laughs> that, I heard a saying the other day. I heard a saying the other day that food be a medicine or medicine will be your food, and I think it's probably very true. Um, I haven't drunk a great deal of late until really? this week, and obviously, so maybe alcohol's a factor. Can I can I just throw in here? We need a big big thank you to. An Italian legend, and we know who that is, don't we? Salvatore. Yeah, the Salvatore. We've been traumatised on some of his journeys to the airport, to the Learned show. some new words. Yeah. Oh, what are they? So we had a driver that has uh, basically been very accommodating all week. He's taken <laughs> us backwards and forwards to the airport, backwards and forwards to the show every day, out in the evenings, and um, he's, been, he's been a brilliant guy. I'm sure he won't be listening to this because he... He's, he's had enough. He, he's, had a, he's had enough of us. Salvatore. So let's talk about each day, and we'll, we'll kind of rattle through this. And um, I suppose what we're really doing is setting the scene as to what videos you'll be able to see on the MTD CNC website in the coming, uh, in the coming days and weeks. So it did all start off on Monday. Uh, there was two, uh, two, two focuses really for us on Monday, but we're going to talk about what was the big one, which was the Tornos event. So we hosted a, a, a live event from Tornos. Now, it, it's a bit 
contradictory in a sense because we weren't actually at Tornos doing oh sorry Tornos wasn't actually at Emo where we did this live event although it was very close to it in fact just less than 10 euros in a in a taxi ride <laughs> uh, and we did a, a live show there where we focused on three specific technologies it really is worth a watch it runs for about 45 minutes on our YouTube channel uh, we cover the multi Swiss machine which is a multi spindle machine which we'll talk about we also cover uh, the Swiss Deco machine, which is um, a machine that was launched about four or five years ago. Again, tremendous flexibility with that. And then we also touched on the DT range, which is the economical um, offering from Tornos. Joe, you looked at the Swiss Deco. This was a big part of the, the event, wasn't it? You were very impressed by it. I'm not surprised. It was a, it's, it's a great machine. Very impressed, very impressed indeed. Quite often you look at these, you know, you look at these machine tools and you think, where do these fit? You know, is it an e economical or a standard machine for maybe uh, a subcontractor? Is it an OEM machine? But I do genuinely think the uh, Swiss Decker 36, I think it was, um, it fits in any of those categories. It really is, you can make parts of blue chip, but you could also be a, uh, a subcontractor, not knowing what's coming through the, the, de uh, the next day. Very flexible, had a full uh, B-axis turret, uh, 12 station with um, half indexing and it had a 500 mil gun drilling which is quite unique I've never seen that before on that style of the machine um, so yeah no I was I was very impressed with it it's a it's a machine <coughs> that they launched I think it was in 2017 so versatile I think you can get up to 57 tools on it when you include the gangs and when and you include the bloke who's a controller <laughs> yeah 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 and you get the you've got the the b-axis turret which has got a 12 station turret on it which can index as, as joe said really impressive bit of technology and something that they were promoting very heavily and I, you, I mean i have not seen one in a company but i can imagine that as a manufacturer if you really want to make a part without taking it off the machine there's not a lot that this machine can't do and i think that's the i think that's the big point about the machine also how quiet it ran did you hear how quiet mm. it was when it was running yeah, you yeah, know, abs absolutely. The control as well. You know, the new CNC control. You know, it's got the, everything you would expect and maybe some things you wouldn't as well. Machine monitoring and maintenance and all the rest of it. Exactly. Then, Colin, you looked at the multi-Swiss. That was part of your uh, involvement in the in the event. Um, multi-spindle technology now more versatile, more quick to set than it ever has been. And that was part of the illustration, wasn't it, or what they were talking about? Yep. So what did you think? Tell yeah. us. It was good. Yep. No, I'm joking. I'll tell you what, I've, I've reviewed a few slide, sliders in my time, but the multi-spindle was absolutely phenomenal. You say, oh, phenomenal. Justify that. You're looking at six or eight spindles. Are you gonna, how long is it going to take to set that? How long is it going to take to program it? And it is so simple. Well, I couldn't do it, but it is so simple to do. It really was. And you, your components are coming off this absolutely every sort of 60 seconds instead of five or six minutes and it's like programming Brilliant. it's like programming you've got eight eight spindles there it's like programming eight two or three axis machines and then the software brings it all together brings to make it, it in to make it you know to put the program together to get but the it's not just off. an x1 z axis it's, they've got the y axis as well so they're making some super super complex parts yep. i think they said if, if it's uh if, if the collets are the same it just takes the same time to set as a traditional um uh, sliding head lathe so it's no longer well they said you i mean yeah obviously price point is slightly higher than a, a slider on its own but it's the equivalent of six or seven sliders slightly higher price point but it's equivalent to that and get it running and if you hear uh, some strange noises it's people moving chairs as we, we're in the lounge at the moment because we're in the bathroom it's, vi <laughs> it's vibrating through the uh, through the microphones um so that was monday then um tuesday we uh tuesday was i mean there was a lot more that happened on on the day but you can visit the youtube channel and our social media channels to see exactly not just what happened in the day what happened in the evening we tend to publicize that a, a fair bit too but mark on tuesday we were at fanic we did the live event that went tremendously well a tour of the stand, which again you can see on the um, on the YouTube uh, channel, Facebook, or LinkedIn. Uh, about an hour and a half stream from there, um, and it was busy, wasn't it? Really busy. Yeah, I mean, trying to find you, fight yourself way around, around the stand. Uh, it was, you know, obviously it tracks. So it was the biggest stand at uh, Emo, we should say, and we had the opportunity to uh, interview the president um, and. The robots that they were actually showing, they had that two and a half ton robot actually you know, firing the uh, the VW around, and then the the new uh, thousand kilo well, one. I think it can flip back. Yeah, it's got the, it does a backflip. Yeah, it basically, does a backflip. Oh, the battery, the, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like, like, is that like Paul is in? Well, his gymnastic the, the, the thing with the, with the fanatic robots doing a backflip, it basically means you can move parts around in a much smaller area, and there's not many robots that that actually can do that. 
Um, Mr. Tanzawa was brilliant, wasn't it, to talk to him? He was so excitable as well, and uh, about the fact that they were, you know, back in an event. The stand was when we started the stream. We was looking at it, thinking, you know, is it going to be busy today? What's going to? But once the stream started, the pa the stand was absolutely mm. rammed. We covered education, we covered covered digital twin technology, we covered um, the new robo drill technology, Internet of things, Internet of Things service education, uh, EDM. Um, Robo shot, which is the injection mould inside, and the most important one, one Fanuc. One Fanuc, yeah, was he, was the theme of the event, and I've known Fanuc for many years, and there's always been lots of aspects to Fanuc, whether it be the controls, whether it be the uh, the Robo machines, whether it be the actual Robo arms, and they have all, always been almost separate entities, but now they've brought them all together. So if you're looking, you you, you seem to see that every single one of the um, the showcases on the stand were actually um, one hit or were automation solutions. And that was part of the um, the one fan. So that's on our YouTube channel as well. But there was more than that happened on Tuesday as well. Joe, what did you do Tuesday? <clears throat> oh, I've been to bed since then. Tuesday, we were at Mazak, weren't we, Tuesday? Um, <laughs> went to do a Emo Encore preview. So basically what they do here at Emo, they pick up the majority of it and take it to Worcester for their November event. So yeah, we went to look at, at some of their technology uh, in including the QTE, which is a cost-effective um, entry-level CNC machine for That's going to be exciting for them, I think. That's going to be really exciting because you've got, you know, companies that aspire to be Mazak users that uh, thought that they were um, not affordable in the, in the past, but they are very much affordable now. It's a, they, they want to call it an entry-level machine, but it's a starting point, isn't it, to become a Mazak customer? It, it's entry-level it's entry for Mazak, but other brands would argue it's not, if that makes sense. It's got everything you would need on it, to be honest, including... Including MSY, including MSY technology. Yeah, uh, and then Tuesday <coughs> evening though, oh, well, I'm going to come at you, but, but I know we're going to go, but we're going to go back and forth on this. But Tuesday evening, wow, what a time we had! Where did we go? Oh, uh, Mr. Leonardo. Yeah, Leonardo da Vinci's um, DiCaprio m Museum. Fantastic evening, I have to say. Um, oh, customer announcement. I have to say, big thank you to Mazak for um, for entertaining us Tuesday evening at their press day, uh, press evening. Fantastic, had a great great time, great company. Yeah, and we we were actually uh, invited. Um, just to hear the tannoys in the background. They're just checking that's not our flight. It's not ours. It is actually. Yeah, it's it is actually, actually our flight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, chop so chop. The, the Leonardo da Vinci. Um, I mean, I, I thought this gentleman was all about paintings, but what? And then he was an engineer. He was a, a builder. He, you know, having the tour around there was something else. A big shout out to uh, Richard Smith and Alan Mucklow for hosting us. Um, and of course, Anita as well uh, for inviting us to that press evening. And unfortunately, you won't find anything on our YouTube channel that happened on Tuesday night. Oh, maybe we'll, maybe no, we'll upload no. some images to LinkedIn or something. Yeah, probably better um, that you didn't. Colin, so Tuesday, what did that hold for you? Well, I'm going to keep it very brief because our flight has just been, in all seriousness, it has been called. So we saw the legend that is Luigi from um, File who does Chucks and Steadies, but... I learned so much about those. It's, 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 I thought it was just a, it's a steady, but it's not just a steady. So speak to see, see Leader Chuck about that. We then saw FRB. Did you know anything about live centers and face drivers? Don't ask Geo because he can make something. Drive dogs. That's exactly it. Drive he dogs. can make something very simple, complicated. But I'll tell you what, the technology that goes into those, absolutely brilliant. And then last but not least, Frankie from Balanced Systems, the best dressed Italian in Italy, and that's a big challenge. But it's all about grinding and measurement solutions, things like that. He was, he was wobbling when I saw him. Don't be an idiot. Uh, talking about Mark. grinding, actually, um, no. we've recently taken on uh, DF Precision, uh, which uh, look after hard inch, uh, grinding cells. And I was uh, with uh, Mike, and we was doing a, a couple of reviews on the machine, and they've just launched a new Kellenberger 10. Uh, it's, and it's, it's because it's a modular machine, it's really cost effective, but it's kept, kept the quality and it really is a smashing machine. So there's a couple of videos coming from Hardinch. Okay, Brilliant. now because of the time, what we're not going to do now is it, 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 what was pre-planned to go through the days. I'm just going to go around you and we're just going to talk about some of the highlights um, one at a time. Joe, pick out a couple of things that you really found that um, excited you during the week. <laughs> um, Right, let's wrap them off. There was a new Lang automation product, very cost effective, starts at £1,500. Um, it basically picks up the um, device and it actually takes it to the tool change, you believe it or not, takes and describing over a podcast. Um, but also went to Owner today and they've got a, a, a powder laser additive manufacturing machine. They're obviously an EDM manufacturer, it's not something you'd expect from Owner, but they've entered the world 
of metal 3D printing, and they're looking to come in about 50% cheaper than anyone else in the market to get market share. So it's a full laser, laser powder, 3D printing, additive manufacturing so machine. Cin sintering or laser print printing? Um, well, it lays the powder, then it <coughs> lays the powder, then it lasers the lasers it to basically cure the powder. But essentially, you can roughly 125,000 pounds for one of those, and they say there's nothing on the market to double that price. Okay, we're going to move this round, Mark. What, what uh, was this? Yeah, two highlights really quickly. Uh, we've spoken about Fanuc. Obviously, that was a, a, a fantastic time with those guys. But uh, myself and Joe, uh, we've done a, um, some great videos on some new products with Renishaw, uh, Revo2, uh, the head on the uh, CMM. Fantastic, because it can actually measure the actual thickness through the outside. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, but they're also pushing very much the... Um, the, the the side of uh, a complete control of a product. They had a uh, tibial uh, tray um, on the additive manufacturing machine. Went on right. a, onto a Mazic. It was cut, and then it went straight over to the uh, CMM measured. And basically, you have all that traceability. And the last thing I'd like to mention is that we. Um, then went over to WFL pool, and we looked at the new M20. Um, Some machine. Uh, right. Well, it's, it's I'm long. assuming it's a biggie. It's, it's not overly huge, but it can do really complex parts. Clamp once, basically. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's their message. And um, they've also got automation on this as well, Paul, haven't they? Yeah, uh, I mean, the conveyor system allows you, doesn't it? I mean, I, I was wow. speaking with the managing director. Chin -chin. Yeah, I know, you, I know you spoke with um, Simon Pollard. And it was also um, great to see the guys from WFL. But the, the machine had a, uh, a, a B-axis on it, um, two spindles, a B-axis, but it also had a... Uh, like a, a turning um, tool on the base, not a turret, but a tool post almost. So rather than a turret, gave it a bit more stability, gave them the ability to do, uh, you know, balance turning and various different options on the machine. It's got a, a big capacity. But one of the points that they were talking about, which I always find fascinating about WFL, because they're not cheap machines, and they'll be the first to say they're not. Certainly not. Mm. But they reckon that their machines are servicing 50% of turbine blade manufacture around the world. 50%. What? So every plane that you get on, there's a good chance that, you know, do the maths, that half the well, blades... Roughly 50%. Half yeah. the blades on that have been mm. machined on a wow. WFL machine. But, but they have produced an M20, uh, sorry, M200 that can actually hold 70 tonnes, clamp once and finish big sort of yeah. oil and gas... Yeah, because I mean they're in the, very much into the energy sector as well. With that being big, I think he was. I think the, um, the gentleman was telling me that they employ 500 people, but for their output in some of these sectors is unbelievable as to what They're they huge, produce. Huge. And it was great. That M20 with a loading system was was yeah, no, it was fantastic. Cool, Colin. Hello, hey, Swiss on it. I'm not sorry, liter not literally. Do what? <laughs> my, my well, not highlight. That. It's all been fantastic. But I did actually a, a new client, Beijing Jingdao, and guess where they're from. Uh, Germany. Australia. No. <laughs> mm. So it's not, not the Taiwan. revolving centers. Taiwan. No, no, they absolutely. <clears throat> the, the machines are absolutely amazing. In fact, I showed you one of the components, Paul, and you're a 30 year time served engineer. And when I showed you what they did, when we pulled it apart, your reaction was. Well, I can't, I can't it repeat it. It reminded me of something Tony did on social media not so long ago, where you got two, you got basically what it looks like one part, but it's actually two. Oh, you absolutely. Can pull it apart. Yeah. And, uh, oh, the, yeah. the EDM boys do that, don't they? Mm. Or was yeah. that was it an EDM boys? No, it? no, this yeah. was this was on a, a five-axis mill, but it was absolutely phenomenal. And there was a, there were was they a, machining those finishes? Yeah, absolutely. And there was one with the mirror finish, and you looked, oh, at, it, you looked at it. It, made, you it made me look good. I tell you what. And said, <laughs> so that's a good. That is one good mirror. But Beijing Jean Dow, we spoke to Mark Camps and. David as well. It was just phenomenal. We've got some great videos coming out there. In fact, I put it on LinkedIn, and there's, a, there's actually been a few doubters. If you're doubters, get in contact with the guys, and they'll prove they will they will prove you wrong. Yeah. How's is it that? the technology or Colin Griffiths? Oh, both. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we were also, uh, I mean, I know we're talking a bit in, in general, and please feel free to chip in with any other highlights that you picked up. But I know for me today, looking on the brother stand, looking at the oh. BBT30 technology again, seeing that they're now producing a high-torque BBT-30 machine, which is cutting stainless steels and titaniums at the same, uh, to the same degree as what a BT-40 does. But the economical or the economy of the machine, they reckon that it's 80% greener, and that's not the colour, but 80% more efficient in terms of what the power consumption is, and 50% faster. How? Now, they are two... Well, firstly, they don't use, if I'm correct, I don't think they use any hydraulics. 
So it's uh, it's, a, it's an electric based machine, and there's so many other factors. I, can I, I do don't a really bad, bad gag? gag. It, well, you can try. There's no giraffes involved in. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, so, just uh, stop that tumbleweed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come on, Ian um, Carver's not invited. Come on, keep going. So, brother, so, so fantastic. They, they were they were absolutely superb uh, in their their economy, the greenness of them. But not only that, the they've got the new MX. Uh, I think it's the Speedio 200, which has got a turning function. It's five axis, and it's also got an automation cell in it. Very compact. Um, a real performer, and in fact, for White House Machine Tools in the UK, this has been their, one of their biggest sellers and a bit of contributor to them almost doubling their output in the last eight months. Can I? Can I tell? I'm going to chip to chip. What's how uh, long? One, I think it's 1.8 seconds. No, less than that. Is it 1.1 second? It's unbelievable. Very, very fast. Um, Joe, come on, quick. We, we, we're literally he's running out of time. Watching we're watching the football. The, we're going to have to board the plane in about another five minutes. Give us a couple of other points that you picked up this week. Uh, there was loads. It, it, like you say, it's difficult, isn't it? We popped on the uh, the Siemens uh, CNC control stand, um, talking to talking to those guys. Some of their, their technology, their IoT, uh, the shop floor monitoring. Obviously, the eight to eight D. What we all know, strong control. Um, approximately twenty two percent market share with that. It, but just yeah, just. Uh, weren't you on ONA as well, looking at EDM solutions today? Yeah, yeah, we went to ONA. Yeah, we talked about that when you went to get the beers ball. But it's um, <coughs> yeah, metal three D printing. And EDM Solutions, obviously CNC International in the UK. I think that's going to be fairly disruptive, to be honest. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, there was also uh, Grappus Parpus this afternoon. Oh. My my goodness me. Um, if you want to uh, invest in a machine that is so well controlled thermally, the accuracy of these machines is unbelievable. They've got curtains, and not the sort of curtains that y- you may be thinking, but they go around the machine, which there's an air, uh, like an air system. An air curtain. And, uh, it is an air curtain, yeah, which purges air, which keeps the machine to a certain uh, geometric accuracy. And then beyond that, if you do want to measure the, ac- the geometric accur- accuracy of your machine, because which a lot of suppliers want you to do, they have a tool that can do this in less than 10 minutes. Yeah, and but it that normally takes two to three days. It does. You do that once every six months normally, two to three days, this machine... Yeah, the solution. Yeah, and you, and two you minutes. Can, it, with it, with it, within less than ten minutes, you can measure the geometric accuracy of your machine. And if you are supplying into a uh, you know aerospace sector or someone that demands your machines to be able to hit certain tolerances, then you may before have had to have spent two or three days um, actually achieving these accreditations, mm. and that's not the case with John Luca and Marcos. Were absolute they, legends. They, they, they were brilliant. Uh, brilliant. One thing to mention to, to our audience as well, you know, obviously a lot of people from the UK didn't visit Emo for, for many reasons, but there's going to be plenty of uh, videos going on our channels. Oh. But also I'd like to mention that the first week of November, there's three open houses. There's Fanuc that we'll be, be at when we pull. Yeah. Um, we've got Star and also Mazak, haven't we? Yeah. Uh, next week, we've got Citizen as well. Citizen, Sorry, Colin, yeah. you're right. That's yeah. right. And there's also, there's also stuff. I mean, there's lots happening as well, which is good. And we're off to Germany? Uh, yeah, we're off to Germany, off to Fakuma next week. And there's a lot of, um, if you go on the MTD CNC website, you can see the events that are up and coming. We're going to mm. try and cover as many as we possibly can. I just wanted to also m- mention the Nakamura machine, which I saw this week. Oh, the new SC, I think it's an SC100 X2. I spoke to Jun, uh, Jungi there. Um, he's recently done interviews with Tony, actually, in the States, which was great to get on camera. No, he was him. in Detroit last week. And he he's, was, he's, he's yeah. Yeah. This week. Um, true multitasking machine in a very small footprint. If you're an AS200 user, then this is the next step on. Um, we are going to have to start wrapping this up. Unfortunately, uh, there's going to be so much coming to the channel very soon from Emo this week. We, yep. we, got, we, got, we got a new signing. Who's that? Ed Sheeran. Oh, of course we have. How can we forget? Because the guy's back in the UK this week. Um, we've got Rowan Easter, who is now a new recruit for us. And he's been at Herco today. He's also at Fanic this week, where he's doing. Um, where well, he's a he's a technical presenter. The guy's got so much uh, knowledge when it comes to um, his skill set in engineering, and he's a new presenter for us. And you're going to see a lot of Rowan. So welcome to the team, uh, Rowan, a young guy about 23 years of age, fully trained engineer, been working machines, got, uh, knows all about cutting tool strategies, work holding. All of that good stuff, and then he's joined the team. So, um, the great thing is, he he brings the average age down for me and Colin. He does, yeah, yeah, which we (laughs) need to do because we are becoming aged. And I think we've learned that this week, haven't we, guys? I mean, how hard is it to do these shows? Don't get me wrong, I mean, we are absolutely, it might not sound it, but we are absolutely shattered and really looking forward to uh, getting on the plane on the way home. Uh, Final few thoughts from 
Each of you, we'll start with you, Joe. Uh, for me, great to be back on the road. Yep, yeah, don't get me wrong, technology is great, but it is good to get back to normal-ish. Don't get me wrong, the, 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 uh, the airport's been a bit of a pig with the paperwork it, we need to do nowadays, and will that disappear? Probably not. But great show, great, great company, mm. and great to see the latest technology. Yeah, roll on the next one. Mark? Uh, quite simple for me. Um, I think Emo has given a lot of confidence for Mac coming up. Next year in yeah, April. Yeah, I'd agree. Colin? I'll tell you what, Mark, that's, uh, I'm going to, can I reiterate that? Footflow there was absolutely brilliant, it really was. Mm. Great machines, great presenters, great videos, and. Some great presenters. Some great presenters. Over to you, Some Paul. Some great activity. No, I think it's. Oh, right actually, there. we need to mention what colour was your shirt last night, Paul? Uh, blue. Fluoro pink, I think, is the. Uh, with, a, with a stain on it. Yeah. yeah. At the yeah. end of it. Yeah. <laughs> But what's that vibration noise? We will, we will, uh, we'll put a picture of that maybe on our social media. You probably please God don't. I would echo those comments. I would say that events are back. Very good to um, see how secure and safe it was to visit Emo as well. Lots of masks wearing. Needed to show your double uh, vaccine, COVID passports. Um, but when you were in there, the, the the halls were packed. The technology was on show, and people were really glad to be back. And we've been really glad to be here. Oh, so we're brilliant. off to jump on the plane, uh, and we'll catch up with you um, same time, which will be Friday uh, next week. Thanks for uh, participating, guys, and thanks for listening. Cheers, Paul. Ciao, Bella. Thanks for listening to the MTD podcast. If you found value in this episode, please subscribe and leave a rating and review. Find more episodes on mtdcnc.com.